Everybody's looking for stuff. There's the stuff you need and the stuff you want. And everybody's wants and needs are different, except that everybody wants a deal on their stuff. The Explorer store at Greenback Street is the best place on the net to get cash back on your stuff. For more than a thousand US retailers, like these guys. Your cash back shopping account is free exclusively at greenbackstreet.com slash explorer store. Or if asked, use promo code 79878. Welcome to Martial Arts Explorer. Exploring functional technique is revealed in classical martial arts of all styles. I'm Scott Combs. There's a lot going on in this episode. Eighth degree black belt Chris Thomas continues his Taekwondo lesson on back stance with the addition of a knife hand technique, and we debut a new feature called Survivors. Survivors is about, well, survivors. People who've survived violent encounters through superior training, indomitable spirit, yada, 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 yada. It's also about people who survived through dumb luck, or those who simply shouldn't have survived but did anyway. As you'll see, we'll cover the sublime, the ridiculous, and the downright scary. But first, here's Michael. Thanks, Scott. We're going to take a look today at uh, being a good partner and how to work that when you're starting to throw somebody. And particularly a move that we call heel pick, there's lots of names obviously, but it's just the one that people tend to have a hard time with when we look at some reasons why they might not work and then how your partner really has to help you do them. And that's probably the most important part. We're actually gonna use a move from say San here that demonstrates this technique. Now this also happens in a uh, Taekwondo form I know called Gay Back. We do the same type of move and I'm sure it happens in many others. So you're looking for hand out, kicking motion. Whether it keeps going or not doesn't really matter, but it allows you to set up this particular technique well. Now my partner's gonna come on in. We're gonna look at how to enter this and then how they're gonna react. Now, this works out well because I don't want my partner to give me anything. I don't want him to make it extra hard on me, especially if I'm learning a technique. We're gonna go a little bit of a 45 degree angle, I think. Reaching technique. He's coming in with the lead hand, he's starting to push. We're gonna slip by it, whether it's one hand, two hand, doesn't matter, slap, parry, brush pass, coming past this way. Now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna to start to work, I'm gonna hit the shoulder, I'm gonna hit the back of the tricep and the triple warmer. One of these, I'm starting to off weight him here. Now if I come in and I lean and I put his weight back, now the move is this. So I'm taking this foot, we call it a heel pick because we're just kicking the heel out, pulling backwards. So as I go ahead and I, and I do this, if I lean into him and I pull him up here, if I weight him back, I get that. Now that's important right there because if my partner wasn't doing his job, he would have just fell down for me and therefore I think I know what I'm doing and we don't want that. So be careful of the weight back. It allows this free swing motion here. The next problem is people will wait entirely forward. So as I come in this way, I pull in here. Now he's weighted across this direction. I have to move to follow the toes, but he's weighted so hard on this, it just doesn't really go. Now if I wound up as hard as I possibly could, I can probably move his leg out but I don't want to hurt my partner either. All right, so we have to find this nice middle ground. So what I want to do, start to move in, off balance a little bit, get him in the right spot. Now remember, I'm trying to pull him and dump him back this way. So I'm gonna start moving him here. Now if I pull too much, he's gonna step. And then the technique doesn't happen. But before that step actually takes place, I knock him forward, I start my grab motion here. Very lightly, you start to pull him back and now I'm gonna pop the leg out here. Oh, and there you go, he's a good example. He's not giving it to me because I don't have him in the right spot. Reach in. And I pop him down. A little faster, sometimes a little bit easier. But there you go. I want you to realize that when you work with your partners. That's very important. He didn't give me the one I screwed up because it didn't work. He didn't give me weight backwards. He didn't give me weight forwards. He didn't give me when I was out of body position. You need to have a partner that's going to work with you and allow you to try this back and forth. So, very important. When we get the class together, let everybody try it out, see how good of a partner they can be, because he's actually helping to train me, which is sometimes the most important part. Thank you. All right, when we get the class, let me give it a try. All right, guys, we're gonna take a look at a move from say San, but I what I want you to really focus on is being a good partner. The move is reach, kick, reach, all right? Punch, kick, punch, whatever the case is. Bro, George, quick. What we're doing is the lead hand is coming in. 
slap parry, moving to the backside, I can pop the triple warmer here. I can even just ram right into the shoulder, knock him forward, and that's fine. Try and weight your partner appropriately. If I push him all the way back, his leg is gonna swing. If I weight him forward, I'm gonna be kicking all day. I wanna get him in the right spot, and then I wanna start to pull him back very so lightly into this hole here. When he would take a step to protect himself is when I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna bump this leg out. So I want you to be a good partner now and let your partner know that either they screwed it up or they got it right. And to do that, keep an appropriate balance and appropriate position. If you're pushed back, sit back and then let him kick your leg. If, if you're pulled forward and it's not gonna go, give it to him. If you're out of position, you just start to swing, swing and that's fine. Don't tip over just because somebody touches you and that's what I want you to work on right now is letting them set up and learn how to do this and remember, everybody has trouble with this technique, including myself sometimes. So you set them forward, pull them back up, Start to tip right where you want them. I don't want them to take a step. I don't want them to re-step right there. I'm gonna try and bump it right before that and tap that leg up and we're hooking low. I'm coming in, I'm using my instep and my shin down nice and low and I'm simply popping that forward. Go the direction the toes are pointing. If you kick against the foot, it doesn't work very well. The foot will grab and hold and you're gonna strain their knees as you come across. Go with the toes. Thanks George. All right guys, give it a try. Yep, kick and pull. That's the right idea, it's a good start. So go ahead and remember it's a slap parry. One, two, come in and you're gonna bump the back of the triple warmer or the shoulder and just use your forearm and just bump them down. And now he's sort of standing back up and you know, Connor's sort of a rag doll and you move him around a little bit and you just bump that and start to tip him back, okay? okay. All right, we're getting a good start on this. One thing to make sure of is you're being a partner, also uh, work on natural body reaction. George, if I was gonna come in and I hit George and I knock him down, what are you gonna do next? Me? Yeah. Idiot, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> if we're in a fight, what's gonna happen? He's gonna stand up, okay, there it is. That's, that's actually the natural reaction for most people. I know some people know other moves and they might spin or turn off or somersault or something like that. Your average person is gonna stand up because your head's gonna turn into the ground so you wanna come back up to continue to fight or at least protect yourself. So I always work natural body reaction. If we're doing this and I knock him over, he wants to stand up, well I let him stand up and then I bring him back the other direction. So some important things to remember as you're being a partner, just like you know someone pushing at your head, you flinch, you don't stay back here and hang out for the rest of the fight, you come back forward. Whatever you would naturally do is what you want to train your partner that you would naturally do so they know how to defend against it or to use it to their advantage. So all important steps as you guys are working on things like this. But good job. Just remember, watch your body weight, watch your body position. And as a partner, you're helping to train the other person. That's the most important thing you can do. Not just work on your falls, but help the other person learn what their techniques as they go along also. All right, we're going to head back to Scott. Thanks. Chesapeake, Virginia, United States, reported by WAVY.com. Chesapeake police say Marquise Martin ambushed a woman, forcing her back into her home. Neighbor Udell Walker heard screams but didn't realize until it was too late that the woman was actually calling for help. The 33-year-old victim was about to head to work when a man carrying a knife jumped out and forced the woman back into her home. She was told to turn off her alarm system and ordered to a bedroom. Here's where it gets interesting. You see, Common wisdom says the untrained person is unable to mount an adequate defense when facing a weapon. Even trained martial artists should acquiesce. However, we see in the Tarkin Kleck study from a few years ago that your chances of personal injury fall dramatically when you do fight back, and the chances of being seriously injured fall even farther. I'm pretty sure this lady didn't know any of this. All she had was her will to survive. She fought back, breaking the knife's blade, and the suspect ran out the door. By that time, neighbors were looking out their windows. Police found the handle of the broken knife and a jacket in the bushes in front of the house next door. Court documents show Martin was living in the home with his grandmother. 
According to state police, Martin is also a registered sex offender, convicted in Chesapeake and Portsmouth for abusing children. He's now behind bars facing several charges, including abduction and burglary with the use of a weapon. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, reported in the Barnaby News Leader. Sean Douglas Sime is in his fifth year of learning martial arts. He likes that it makes him physically and mentally tougher, but the nine-year-old never imagined he'd have to use it to save himself from harm. His martial arts instructor, Jim Hanger, didn't either, but he prepares his students for that possibility just in case. That training and preparation paid off when Sean Douglas was grabbed from behind by a stranger. My name is Sean Douglas and I'm nine years old. I was walking up the hill to my friend's house when my, me and my brother were talking and Connor started running ahead. And then he came back to talk to me and then a guy was grabbing me from behind and then he tried to come and punch him. I thought really scared and I thought I was gonna, and I was gonna see my parents. But by the time Sean Douglas' brother returned, it was all over, and the stranger was staggering away, hobbled by an injured knee. Sean Douglas broke the man's grip with techniques he learned and kicked his attacker in the side of the knee. The guy went down to the ground screaming, according to Father Dean, recounting the boy's description. Wales, United Kingdom, reported in Wales on Sunday. A classic battle of good versus evil. And just like in the Star Wars films, the Jedi Knights came out on top against their darkest foe, the sinister Darth Vader. However, this duel didn't happen a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but in a remote corner of North Wales. Barney Jones, his brother Daniel, and their cousin Michael were performing some warrior moves in their back garden, preparing for a documentary to be shown on television. The boys are founders of the Angel Sea Jedi Church, which takes teachings from the famous Star Wars film Heroes. The story goes that a drunken Darth attacked them, not with a lightsaber, but a metal crutch. During the epic attack, Arwell Hughes, 27, wore a black trash bag as a cape and leapt over the wall to strike Barney over the head. He then turned on Michael, hitting him in the leg, causing a bruise. The boys called police and the drunken Sith was hauled away. Surprise, surprise, Hughes has previous convictions, including assault and disorderly behavior. The Church of Jediism, Angel Sea Order, was established last year and has about 30 members. The Jedi Knights, ranging in age from 18 to 27, survived. A lot of people who train with me have stories that go, I thought I was going to learn pressure points, and after six months, he finally showed me a pressure point. <laughs> and on the first day, it was, my feet were wrong. Okay? So what I try to tell people is, I also do pressure points. I mean, that's, but I do, it's everything. So. You, if you just know pressure points, but everything else is really bad, it'll, it works. Pressure points work. But what if you miss the pressure point? But if you do everything well, if your stance is good, if your body posture is correct, first, if you do that, you're almost certain to hit the pressure point because the, it, the lineups just are there. The way things work, everything lines up. But if you miss the pressure point, it still works because you're, you're in such a good structure. So a lot of times I get very picky and I do these really picky structure things. This is that. But... By the time we're done, you're going to be going, I totally get it. <laughs> when you guys do, how many, do any of you do, do you do this version? How many do this version? Okay. And does anyone do this version? Okay, this way? All right. There are actually two versions, and I, that's why I just needed to know which one we were going to talk about today. <laughs> um, the principle is almost identical for the other one. It's just slightly different. Uh, it's the same, but different. <laughs> Actually, let me use you, Mike, this time. Yeah, you get hit enough. So, person is attacking me. This is called a stabilization grab. Anytime you get this sort of, it's hand on the chest, it's hand on the shoulder, sometimes it's the throat. But what it means is, because he, he, he knows that if he just takes a swing at me, I might duck, right? So he does this so that I'm, my head's, he knows where my head is. And especially, he might push me back, and by doing this, I'm off balance, and now he knows right where my head is, so that's why this is done. And you can always tell because this bone is going to be up. And if he grabs this way, so, you know, like, he's tangled up my clothing, he's probably not going to punch me in the face. I'm not saying he wouldn't for sure, but he's not going to do this. Actually, he's more likely to either do, oh, I gotta, or he's going to punch me in the stomach. Okay? So this is a clue, by the way. So this is a very common kind of position. I've been grabbed. And 
I'm going to be totally honest. The first thing that's going to happen is he's going to throw that punch to my head, and I'm going to go, ah, somebody's trying to hit me in the head. My hands are just going to come up, okay? I'd like to pretend I'm so cool karate guy. I'm like, oh, no, 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 but the reality is I'm going to go like this. That's going to be my first reaction. Now, good karate, good martial arts, good taekwondo, the real deal, the master, the, the really good people, their hands are down, and they just go, boom, and it's over. Um, I will tell you a secret. I operate at a green belt level. I believe in ordinary skill, extraordinary results. Is that what we should put on the t-shirt? That's it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ordinary skill, extraordinary results. I am not a great athlete. I don't have great reflexes. I'm not quick. I'm older by the minute. So understanding this, I tend not to want to do techniques that require high levels of skill. I want to do techniques that are kind of stupid easy and incredibly effective. So I realize I'm standing around, a guy does this to me, he throws a punch at my head, I'm probably going to be here. But this is an okay place for me to be because he's going to pull that hand back again and try hitting me again, and there's my setup. But what I want you to see is, notice how I've gone over his arm. I now have control of his arm right here. Notice how I've stepped. Now, we're going to ignore this hand for a minute. Now I can strike. I can pop him with my elbow and then strike. Notice him, you can see, do you see him go try to catch his balance? Because of where I'm positioned, he's just fallen. If I step very deep, so I'm way up by his knee, then I can bring my elbow down. In other words, I just drop my elbow in this sort of an arc and he falls down. And there's this tiny rotation of my body. It's very simple. So that's what I, I want you to do. You're gonna go, oh crap, he's trying to hit me. One, you can, if you want, control this, I don't care. Step in and just play with, I don't care where you end up, because I, what I want you to feel is you've got contact, and then make use of that contact to just toss your partner down. Thanks for watching. Email is welcome. Send it to explorer at martialartsexplorer.tv. For Martial Arts Explorer and Michael Kleinapier, I'm Scott Combs.